Welcome to Body Bags. I'm your Thursday reviewer, Chris, from Chris B. Movies. You know my name is Chris, and you know I love B. Movies. Now, this film I would not consider as a B. Movie. Now, I don't think you can get a physical copy of this one yet, but it's on Netflix, and it is a Netflix film. So definitely check this one out. It's from 2019. It's called In the Tall Grass, and you probably have heard about this one before. Maybe you haven't seen it, but I would definitely check it out if I were you. It's a film written and directed by um, Vincenzo Natale, okay? And it's based on a novella written by Stephen King. More incentive for you guys to watch it. Plus, it has Patrick Wilson, who's friggin' awesome and everything. So definitely check it out. It's on Netflix. If you don't have Netflix, get Netflix just to watch this one. All right, so this is a film <clears throat> that I can give you a synopsis but telling you too much would be a spoiler for you. So just notice that there could be spoilers within the context of my synopsis here, just to let you know if you've never seen this one before. But I will tell you something right now, and this is not a spoiler. You should definitely watch this one. It's a film that's very tense, and it's an edge-of-your-seat film. Though I thought otherwise, but I thought it was a good edge-of-your-seat thriller. Okay? With some spiritual meaning behind it. And based on certain fears. You've been in a crowd of people and you're a short person, you can't see over people. How scary that is. Mm -hmm. Try to have tall grass all around you. Very tall grass. You can't see over it. You don't know how to get out. Oh yeah. Based on fears. I wonder if this was based on one of Stephen King's nightmares. Because a lot of times Stephen King would have a nightmare and then wake up and what he could remember he'd write it down and base a lot of his films and novellas off it. So very interesting film, but I would definitely <clears throat> check this one out. So I'm going to give you a little synopsis. Um, Becky and Cal, siblings, you can tell they're very close. Uh, Becky is pregnant, and unfortunately she has to give her baby up for adoption. The father of the baby kind of treated her like shit and kind of took off on her, kind of brushed her off like she was nothing, just pfft. the the thought of him having a kid kind of scared him away, so he just got out of the picture. Uh, but he will show up within the context of the film. And um, you almost think, like, you know, he felt bad and is trying to make amends and trying to right all the wrongs, but <clears throat> you'll find out there are ulterior motives in everything. So they're driving, they happen to bond this big field with very tall grass, <clears throat> and they're right across from this abandoned church, which is a scary church. And you want to know kind of uh, the history of this church, because it's, again... A creepy little church. So they stop the car for a second. <coughs> and all of a sudden, they hear a sound of a boy coming from the field of tall grass. Saying, help! I'm stuck! I can't get out! Help me out! Help! Help! Now, the first thing you'll wonder when you hear a little boy's voice, where's this kid's parents? What happened to them? You're going to find out in the context of the film. Actually, Patrick Wilson plays his father. And again, Patrick Wilson is freaking awesome. He plays Ross Humboldt. So, of course, what would you do when you hear a little boy's voice saying, help, help? Wouldn't the decent thing to do is to go in and try to find this kid and try to get him out? So, uh, Kala is kind of uh, resistant to go in there, but Becky's like, you gotta help him out, you gotta help him out. So, eventually, he's like, oh, okay. So, he goes in there, and he's trying to find this little boy named Tobin. And, again, he hears his voice, tries to follow where the voice is, but again, the methods of trying to find him are futile because he's having a hard time finding him. So eventually Becky makes her way in and now they're both trying to find Tobin. <coughs> and basically, throughout the context of the film, they're stuck in this field of grass where once you enter, it's almost impossible to get out. Well, there is a way, but they'll find out within the context of the film. But just who will get out? And then you find out how Tobin got stuck there in the first place and exactly what happened to his parents and how his father, how Tobin's father met up with this big, mysterious rock, big, huge rock, and how it kind of infected his soul. And um, you'll find out the history of this rock, which is um, very interesting because <clears throat> it's kind of a new take for a film, you know? Um, and it's kind of a good idea. It's a good original idea of what happens when you touch this sacred stone. And the grass seems to take on a life of itself where it's basically consuming 
anybody who walks in. Um, so that was fun as well. But this is an edge of your seat film, and you're kind of wondering out <clears throat> how these people are going to get out. And then bad things happen to these people over and over and over again. And it looks like they, from what I got from the beginning of it, that they entered hell. And obviously, they can't find a way out. Um, and that's what you get from the first part of this film. But when the film moves on, and I don't, I don't want to spoil too much for you, because I want you to have the experience that I had watching it. I went into it without hearing any reviews, without hearing anybody talk about it. I kind of went into it fresh, and that's what the way I want you to go into it. But if you like a tense, edgy of seat thriller, um, you, you're going to really enjoy this one. And again, you're trying to figure out what is going on throughout the entire film. So it gets your mind moving. <clears throat> and I think Patrick Wilson is fantastic in this film. <clears throat> you also really feel for Becky and Cal. Because <clears throat> Becky and Cal went into this field trying to do a good duty. Trying to help the, a young boy out. I know there was a scene where um, Cal finally meets up with Tobin. And um, Tobin has this um, dead raven in his hand. And he's like, you know, it's easy to find people in here when they're dead. Which was a real creepy scene. Um, Tobin, played by Will Bowie Jr., he did a really good job for a kid actor... He was phenomenal in this film. And I think generally the acting in this film is great. But again, I don't want to give too much away. Basically the synopsis is they try to help the kids out. And then they get stuck in the tall grass. And they can't get out. And they keep meeting up with, again, Tobin and his parents. And then the rock where if you touch this rock with two hands, bad things will happen. For eternity. I'll just say. <clears throat> and then the part where they um, happen upon an abandoned bowling alley. Uh, real, real tense scene there. So I'll just say that. Uh, once they enter the bowling, bowling alley, uh, it's a bit scary seeing what happens. And then seeing the real side of um, Tobin's father, Ross Humboldt. Because, again, you get to find out more about him in that scene and how scary he truly is. All in all, um, it was a great experience, a great film, and you really root for Becky and Cal, which is something you don't see in a lot of films, where you're really rooting for the good guy, because lately, the films that are coming out, you're, you're more rooting for the bad guy than anything. Um, but again, you know, um, the tall grass, it seems to be consuming humans, and it seems to take on a life of its own, and it's the grass in this film is a character in its own right. And then you see the this, this group of, like, grass people. They almost look like cannibals um, coming in and trying to do sacrifices on the people that are stuck in there. So you're going to find out more about that as well. And again, I don't want to give too much away because I want your experience to be pure when watching this film. So I'm going to stop there. Um, now, the ending, my wife hated the ending, <clears throat> but I love the ending. I kind of got it, and it made sense within the context of the film. She thought otherwise, and you may think otherwise. <clears throat> you may love this film, you may not love this film. You know, like I say, movies are subjective. You know, whatever you thought of the film, if you think, uh, if you think that um, you don't share my love for this film, boom, you have that right. You know, you may love it, you may hate it. But I think it was a tense film. Um, you know, a lot of it was edgy a seat, um, and there were some scenes where it kind of moved a little slowly, but I thought the ending was great, and I thought I got everything I needed out of the film from the ending, so that's the most important thing, right? But again, um, you know, the film never got dull for me, um, and like I say, there were some slow-moving scenes, but <clears throat> it kind of made sense throughout the context of the film, and I was still enthralled by the film, should I say. You know, I think it was very well done. I think Netflix films are generally really well done and really well acted, and um, the whole atmosphere of the film was was great. Uh, a lot of it was dark and gloomy, which I liked. It almost seems like um, if you put yourself in the position of these people, um, it could be generally more scarier. 
Because that's what I like to do. I like to put myself, say, what if this happened to me? How would I react? Um, and I could feel what a lot of these people are feeling in the film, too. Because, like I said, I, I put myself in their shoes. And when you put yourself into character shoes, you get more enthralled by, by films in general. That's the way I look at it. So I'm going to give this a rating. And again, this is my rating. Your rating may be lower or higher. Let me know what you think of this film. Write down in the messages below. Tell me if you agree or disagree with me. It's okay to disagree. It's okay to agree. Movies are subjective. You get what you get out of it. And my wife was not impressed, but I was thoroughly impressed. I give this film a 90 out of 100. <clears throat> because, again, I was enthralled by the film from beginning to end. You know, I saw the despair. I saw the religious connotations. And I saw that if you do bad things, bad things will happen to you. <laughs> and if you happen to be in a field of tall grass and you see a big giant rock, don't touch it with two hands. <laughs> you might be stuck there for a lifetime. That may be a spoiler too. But anyway, the acting was great. Patrick Wilson was great. All the actors did a wonderful job. And again... I like the film a lot. So check it out on Netflix. It's an hour and 30 minutes. You know, you could be spending your time doing other things. On a rainy, snowy day, check it out. It's called In the Tall Grass. And again, thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting all the other Body Bags reviewers. They do an amazing job, each and every one of them. Oh, yeah. And check you out next Thursday for another review from Crispy Movies. And don't forget to check out those late night horror films. Read up on your latest Fright Mags. But don't forget to tune in to another episode of Body Bags. Later.